So uh, it's really nice to see you guys. Um, today, uh, I, I didn't plan a, a very like hardcore uh, bit by bit presentation because I didn't want to, uh, you know, uh, I didn't want to uh, talk down to anybody about, you know, what they know about word processing program, any of that. Um, one of my uh, one of my initiatives as a writing fellow in the English department is to uh, last semester it was different. This semester I want to figure out how to how to help uh, teachers and students uh, in, in improve their abilities with word processing programs. Uh, because I teach uh, many, many uh, courses of freshman comp, and it's uh, and it's very clear that that some students did not get any education in this uh, at all in high school. I've asked, and and very few of them took any computer classes. I, I'm old enough where I remember that uh, we got in the, the big blocky Apple IIe's, and they they taught us typing, uh, but but that seems to have in many places gone by the wayside. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to. Share my screen. I like I like PowerPoints, especially when we're distant. But yes, indeed, I'm Kenneth Nichols. I'm a writing fellow in the English department, uh, and I know many of you. And so, uh, so this will be exciting. Uh, why why am I doing this? What is my inspiration? Uh, aside from the fact that I see so many papers, so many freshman comp papers, which is great, um, but there there are so many concerns. Uh, I, it, it's it's a little bit surprising uh, that that students are often unfamiliar with even the very basics about what a tab key is, what it does, how to center text, how to turn it, make it to go to the right. Uh, they, some of them are unaware of what word wrapping is um, because on a typewriter, obviously you have to hit the return bar, ching, chicka, 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 <laughs> ching. But on a computer, it, it automatically does that for you. Uh, it's like magic. And so some students I'll say, why are these lines so weird? And then I, I go into the invisible characters, which I'll show you. And I find that, no, oh my God, they just hit return, just like it's a typewriter. Um, I have a colleague who's superior to me in so many ways, so I'm definitely not saying anything unpleasant, uh, but I found, uh, she circulated a document and I found that she started new pages by hitting enter a few times until it got to the new page. Uh, and, and so I was surprised. I just found that fascinating. Um, and obviously I'll, I'll talk about why that's like a concern, uh, but, but I found that fascinating. And I, I reiterate, I'm not saying anything unpleasant. Uh, and I had a really cool student who, uh, very, very bright young student, uh, and, and her, her name contains an E with an accent mark over it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and so I, she would, I, I asked, oh, that's cool. Like, so you, you do it with, uh, with the, the computer codes, you know, the, the, the binary codes or whatever they're called. And she, no, no, I, I copy paste it. So every time she types her own name into mm -hmm. anything, she has to copy paste, she has to like Google search, you know, even an accent and then copy and then paste it and make sure that it's the right formatting. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And I told her, no, I have to do is like alt, alt 0233. And for her, I don't expect anyone to memorize all of them, but for her, like that, that's just something that would make her life so much easier. It's her own name, you know? Uh, <laughs> and of course she, because I'm the teacher, she did reject my suggestion and she said, no, I'll just copy paste. I'm like, all right, well, you can lead a horse to water, right? Yeah, fine. Um, Correct. Yeah. Uh, and so look, why do these things matter? I, I'm definitely not like a pedantic jerk and, and or any any of that. Uh, I, I've been beaten down but too much by the last year to, you know, to get too upset about things. Uh, but it really is important in a lot of ways. Uh, the, failing to understand how the word processing programs work makes it a lot harder to follow the MLA and APA and all of the other citation styles. Um, because uh, students can't indent properly, um, they, they, they copy paste incorrectly. It, it just makes it a lot harder. Understanding what margins are, all of that, uh, it, it makes it much harder. Uh, and I don't know, to some extent, we have to reinforce that doing things properly is useful, right? Like I'm, I've been painting for a little bit over a year and, and uh, I, I should be taking more tutorials and taking classes uh, and it would, make my, it would make my art better and, and easier. But I don't. But that's why we have to encourage people to do things properly. Uh, and my goodness, as a as a, uh, a teacher of composition, I would love to spend all of my time talking about ideas and and writing and, and all of these these upper level things. But of course, I do it happily. But I, I have to show students how to put page numbers into a document or any of those those basic things that that you know we we don't want to talk about because those should have been years ago and that applies to all of your fields whatever whatever those happen to be uh and it is being part of the academy right part of why we're here is to help students understand what it what it means to be a scholar 
Uh, and, and part of that is, is producing documents that, that look scholarly. And especially in a non-English non uh, non subject, uh, you, you want more time to teach the material uh, and to spend more time on that instead of having to address these, again, these, these little things that I know it's persnickety, but it's still stuff that we, that we have to focus on. But more importantly, this will help you with jobs, right? Someday you're going to have to take some verbiage that a boss has given you and, and put it into an email and it's gonna come out in the email looking all weird. So you have to figure out how to fix it. There's all those million little things that you'll get in, in the real world um, and, and, and all of that. So I, I, I do see it as, as really important. Oops. Oh. Like I said, students are going to be engaging in activities like mine. I do not expect them to, to uh, learn how to make eBooks and how to make uh, print ready uh, InDesign files for paperbacks and hardcover books and electronic books. I don't expect that. But the point is that at some point, uh, a boss will say, oh, hey, look, we have these two reports. Um, can, you, can you merge them together or, or whatever it is? And students have to know how, how to arrange things. Uh, my goodness, when I started working on InDesign, I spent the first day, well, I spent 11 hours. And by the end of it, I, was, I had a headache. I was really irritable and angry because it's difficult. And there's so many little tiny things that you have to think about. And now I only get a little bit frustrated, well, a little bit less frustrated. Uh, but the same thing, uh, and, and so like making an ebook that, that involves uh, learning HTML because that's all an ebook is. It's just XHTML pages stuck together. Um, so uh, that, that is something that students will be using as they go into the real world, just learning a little bit of, of HTML, all of the, the code, all of the reasons why things look weird on a page or on the screen. So I, I do think it's somewhat important. Um, so let's have a little bit of discussion. Uh, I, I'm just curious. Yeah, like I said, I don't want to, I'm not talking down to anybody and assuming you guys don't know things, um, but can, can we talk a little bit about how much you know about using Word and, and Google Docs? Uh, Ken, this is Mary McGowan. I know little to nothing about Google Docs, having grown up in Word. So Google Docs make me crazy. That's my comment. Why, is, why, why do they make you crazy? Because I don't know how to use them, I guess. And so when someone sends me in something in Google Docs, I convert it to Word. So I don't have to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, <laughs> that's the first thing I learned how Microsoft. to convert it to what I know. But that's not, real, that's not really very um, smart. In, in a lot of places, um, the, uh, they're, they're having students, instead of using the program on your desktop, uh, you, you can use Word now in, uh, on the internet. So it's very much like Google Docs, except different. So either way, you're gonna have to learn how to, learn how to do this stuff eventually. Um, but, oh, okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, uh, so uh, Michelle has said, okay, just the basics, good, good. And I, uh, it's okay if you can't speak, Michelle, but I, I'm, I wonder what people mean by the basics, right? Um, and yes, Casey, uh, using para paragraph styles in, in InDesign, oh my goodness, that was, that was the, the tipping point for me not going insane, is learning, uh, you learn the, the different paragraph and, 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 and word styles, oh my goodness, it was crazy. Um, yeah, and Google Docs, uh, Google Docs is relatively simple, but yeah, again, everybody's at different places. Um, and Echoing Mary's sentiments. Yeah, okay, okay, fascinating. Uh, so like I said, I, I didn't want to assume either way um, how people felt or their abilities. Uh, yeah, styles are present in Word, yeah, yeah, um, in Word and Docs too. Um, and uh, as we learned in uh, the English department did a lot with accessibility uh, over the summer and the, the paragraph styles uh, really help with accessibility as well. Um, okay, all right, good. Uh, oh, and by the way, if, if you want to ask questions uh, about how I'm doing something, then that's that's perfectly fine, and that's kind of why we're here, right? So I thought I'd just talk about some of the basics, I guess, then, and see see where we go. First of all, invisible characters. Oh, I'll make sure that's a chat. I feel like a live streamer. Uh, that's okay, Scott. That's okay. Not upset. All I have to do is hit Control Enter or Insert Page Break, but that's fine. That's fine. Um, Invisible characters are really the key, one of the big keys for me. Uh, I don't want to stop sharing. I want to get rid of the, there it is. All right, so we're in the word. Okay. Uh, all right, so I didn't copy any pros because I wanted to copy some pros. Let's, I thought I had it up, but it went away. 
could have sworn I did. Oh, because I put it over. Oh, because it went. There we go. All right, good. All right, so, so I'm, I'm just putting random prose, well, not so random prose, into, into Word. Now, you'll notice, do you see how... Okay, this is one thing I hate about Word is that they make it harder to grab it at the, the window at the top. I hate that. But if you'll notice, um, see how there's, there's all kinds of dots between everything and this para paragraph symbol here and these little bubbles that drove me nuts when I was first learning how to make uh, InDesign files. Those are all formatting things input by the website because I copied it from a website. Now, as we know, uh, mostly for good, many students are, are copying quotes uh, from, the, from the internet, which is fine because they're citing them and they're doing it properly. That's a thousand percent fine. But what happens is you're, you're dragging in the, the formatting from the website, especially if you do it differently. Um, so uh, do you see the, if you toggle this pa the paragraph symbol here, you're showing and you're hiding the invisible symbols. So when I was going through, um, and in InDesign, like, gosh, what's going on here? Like, I, I can't, I, I'm trying to get rid of all the double spaces, but I can't. It's because this wasn't a double space. Uh, you'll also notice that there's uh, a paragraph symbol. But if you hold down shift accidentally, when you hit enter, uh, you have a, this is a different way of wrapping the text, a different way of, of, of curating the text. And so it, it seems weird, but but all of the keystrokes that you, that, uh, that you put in or that you copy in are all in, all in there. It's just you have to, to be able to see them. So this is my advice. If you're if you're uh, if you're copying into an email or, or you're trying to correct something format wise, if you if you look at the invisible characters, you'll often see, uh, oh, this is crazy. Like that's how. Students also use. Uh, I, I had a, a student again, a really wonderful student who who uh, I noticed in because I'll, I'll I'll do a little I'll do a little uh, you know click and drag over their their work cited pages, and I saw that oh the student looked like she was using the indentation properly in, in, in her work cited, but she was doing this. She was putting in M's and then turning them white, which is incredibly cumbersome. Uh, an incredibly cumbersome thing to do. But see how it tricked me? Oh, she tricked me. Then I went like that. Why can't I see it? Uh, but I can see these characters. And I said, why did you why did you make them? And she said, well, it's your favorite letter. And I'm like, okay, all right, cool. Um, but the, so the point is that you don't have, you don't have to put in those extra, extra characters and the, the, um, the uh, hidden characters help, help you see what's going on with that. Let's see. And go ahead and ask questions. Have, has anyone ever uh, turned on those, those invisible characters? No? I'm not crazy though. Like you've all, you, you've been in some situation no. where you're like, "Why, goodness, why?" Or no. go ahead, Kate. I have. Okay. I didn't really. But, but have you been in it? I didn't really know. Well, I I know that they were there, but I didn't really know how to turn them on. I guess. And I've wanted That's to do okay. it for mine, but I've never really thought to do it for students. But it makes sense. Yeah, and so so uh, I'm I'm assuming we're all instructors here. Um, I, I, we're grad students, maybe, but uh, but yeah, it's, it's for ourselves, but also uh, also so we can help better help the students. Uh, so well, I'm, I'm telling the students. I'll oh, be typing ahead, something for work, and I'll be I'll mess it up somehow, and I won't be able to figure out how to, you know, get it to stop indenting twice when it only you know I wanted it to indent once and that sort of thing so and i don't know how to fix it but if i could see those characters i think i would be able to fix it a lot easier yeah there's uh there's two kinds of tab indenting when i'll talk about tabs but again i'm happy to talk about whatever um so there's there's the the indent caused by the actual program itself see how the see how the margins in the first line indent went in half an inch for a tab then there's also uh, there's also this one, which looks like a tab, but isn't. It's adding another character. So if, again, if you copy this prose to something else, that, that character will be there. Whereas here, there is no character, right? Uh, so, so that's the difference there. I, I know, I know. I feel like, I feel like a nerd. I feel like a nerd. Uh, good. So we talked about characters. 
file extensions. These are very, very, very important. Uh, I have students who, who will send me, send me all kinds of files I can't read. Uh, I, I could convert them, but I'm not gonna convert. And it, you know, it takes a few minutes and then, and then if I do that 20,000 times, it takes even longer to grade papers. But uh, some people send me Apple Pages documents like, and there's no one in the galaxy who can read these. Uh, and there's, there's a million different ways to convert these. Again, I don't know what your familiarity, but, but uh, so Mary is working primarily with Word. So she's using doc and docx. Dot doc is the, the Word 97 version, which is fine. And docx is the, the more modern version, which you don't really need. Uh, it, it's, it's, but it's the same thing, give or take, it's fine. Uh, yeah, pages file extension. I, uh, so yeah, I, I would just ask the students to, to uh, send it back. Like I would say, can you send this to me as a, um, as a whatever file you prefer? And how do you do that? It's really, really easy, even if the students tell you that it's not. If you click save as, oh, it made it harder, would made it harder, but you can save your, your document in all kinds of different formats. You can save it as a PDF, XPS document, um, anything, 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 plain text, rich text format. I put RTF in, the, um, in my list because if you wanna strip the formatting, if you're copy pasting from the internet or something or from another document and you just, you just want the text, just the, 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 the key text themselves, Rich text format is basically um, just the words, just the words. So if I convert this to, uh, I'll, I'll do it. again, so this is how students can do it. They can they can and transfer can it to a screen? different uh, file. You're not your screen's oh, not sharing. Oh, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was. Thought it was. Thank uh, you. Good. Trying. Sorry to make you stare at me. So an RTF is rich text format. So this is what this looks like. So no matter what the formatting looks like, look what happens, boom. Wait, I didn't want WordPad, I wanted, uh, I wanted Notepad. This is also really great if you're working on, on HTML and stuff. So look, this is what, this is basically an RTF, right? It's just the text. And see how this is much easier and much more useful when you're trying to put, uh, put prose from one program into another. Does that make sense, Mary? Yeah, so rich text, obviously you, you can open these in Word. They're, they're, they're like the, the, the most compatible um, uh, uh, most compatible documents possible because they can be opened by any, any uh, word processing program because it's just the basics. It's not, there's no formatting involved. Um, good question. I'll leave it open to students. I think that's how I solved the problem when I was, I had stuff in Blackboard and when I was copying and pasting it onto another document, it was coming up with the gray bar behind it. So we had to put it on the notepad to get rid of that, to put it on another document. Otherwise it would always have that, the gray color behind it. Right, right. Um, and there are, oh, oh, a PDF. I, I do have to talk briefly about, uh, PDF is great. It's, it's the, the what, portable document format. It, it's great if, if the document is static and requires no commenting. You can comment via PDF, but it's it's pain and it's it's proprietary and Adobe can be annoying. Um, but PDF is great. If I want to see, oh, a Supreme Court decision, you know, boom, open it up. It's, it, that's the document. Okay, great. I don't need to make comments. But if a student sends me a PDF, I can't, I can't do anything with it. I can't, I can't add edits. I can't make comments. I can't do it. It's just much a million times harder. So I say, please submit. You can also convert it, but then it strips the formatting and it, and it looks different. Uh, so generally I'll, I'll just say, can you please just resubmit this? Uh, because again, if it, in the real world, if a boss says like, I must have this document as a doc, like you gotta do it. It's just the way it is. Again, now I don't expect everybody to know all of the keyboard commands, but they make your life so much easier, right? Uh, I, I'm having flashbacks to 25 years ago, teaching my dad learn how to, to learn how to copy and paste. Uh, on the computer, right? He had to write it down and it took him several months to figure it out. Um, but, but students should know a few, at least a few of the, the very e keyboard commands, right? Copy and paste and cut. Uh, remember when you copy uh, and cut, you're putting text or images onto the clipboard, like a magical, a magical depository uh, sitting outside of the computer that you can later use by pasting. Um, undo control Z. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that Mary, when, when you like played with things and, and it started looking wrong, all you gotta do is say control Z and, and it undoes it and you can try again. 
I love Control Z. Yeah. Very fun. Uh, and then in <laughs> me too. Uh, and then centering uh, and left and right. Like I don't expect everyone to know everything, but th those are kind of the basics. Uh, oh, did I hit the wrong? Oh no, I'm sorry. You're right. It's Control V. My 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 fault. And yes, Casey. Um, uh, I like I just do it so many times I don't think about it. Uh, and yes, uh, I I am unfamiliar with Max for many many reasons. Uh, so it's yes, you hit the command button. The point is, if if you have a Mac, like you should. You should know how. Um, yes, and, and Casey points out, yes, in pages, all you have to do is file, export as, and change it to a Word document, and, and everything's fine. Uh, it's amazing. The, I remember a million years ago when I was taking a test for a, to be a temp, uh, like I, I just felt so, oh, did I, I didn't, I didn't mean that. I meant this, okay. Uh, there's nothing like taking a test to, to see if you can make $8 an hour, you know, there's nothing like that. So 99% of the, the questions on the exam can't, can be solved by, oh, they changed in the olden days, you didn't have all these stupid pictures. But now uh, the, the menus, all you have to do is go through the menus. How do, I, how do I add something? Oh, here, like add this. How do I play with the margins? Oh, you need to just look through until you find margins, right? Um, so a good percentage of the time, that's, that helps you figure things out. Uh, good. Cutting and pasting, and there's so many options here, right? So I don't know if you're aware, but all right. So this is a PDF of a random, a random uh, paper I got from the databases. So again, students students are always copy pasting uh, in an honorable way, and it's fine. So if we copy and paste, and sometimes I'll, I'll get something Control A to highlight all. Um, and this one actually isn't that bad. This it's not. This isn't that, that bad on um, uh, on on Word. Uh, this transition because it looks kind of cool. But you have these options, right? If you only want to keep the text that's that was given you by the PDF, right? You can hit this one. Um, if you want to put the two the two different documents together, do that. Or if you really want the document to reflect the the original, you you hit the the source one. Now, um, in Google Docs, it's a little bit different. Right? So if I just paste normally, I, this, this is what I get. Um, now, if I paste without formatting, uh, that it, you have to install different extensions. And the, many of the extensions that you want to put into Google Docs are not allowed by, um, by, the, uh, by our, our CTS folks. Uh, you know, for good reason. Uh, for example, the there's there's an there's a, a plugin to help you figure out to see the invisible characters in Google Docs, but you can't you can't install it. Um, so it's a little bit, you know. The biggest problem that people have with copy pasting properly is the is with their citations. So if I just now again, this is a million times more useful and and, and easier than when I was young, right? Uh, so if you paste, okay, well, this is wrong. This is, this is all, all wrong, right? Um, you have a choice to make. If you just keep the text only, you're, you're reverting to the default format. And I'll talk about default in a minute, but the default formatting uh, of my page. So if this were a paper, this is what I want because I want it to be 12 point times new Roman, you know, single space, no extra spaces between the paragraph, all, all that stuff. So if I keep that, I still have to, I have to make sure that I um, italicize the proper things and all that. And uh, I think Mary's referring to the indent, the indent problem. Now again, this is a this is a play with it thing, right? So if you hit Enter Tab, see how it indented an automatic tab, not the one with the arrow. And same thing here. If I if I hit Enter, boom, now I have a properly formatted thing. A lot of this again is just it's just playing with it and figuring it out. Um, I, feel free, somebody, to tell me if I'm telling you things that you already know, or uh, if you have any questions. Okay. Um, Ken, something that I do actually uh, for indentation in reference section is um, hanging, uh, which is actually in, if we go to paragraph, if we click on paragraph, please, uh, the, the down arrow up on the paragraph. Yeah. Yeah, so when you click on special above, if you click on special, 
do you see uh, it's next to indentation, then the special go down, go, um, go right, 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 special, click on oh, that here, here, okay. and say hanging. Yes. So it does it automatically for all the references. And this is what I teach my students. It makes it so easy. So you don't have to do tab individually. Yeah, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's the whole point is that there's a million different ways to do all these things. Um, but yeah, so, so that's another way to do it. One of the, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, um, I, I, teach, I teach playwriting uh, when I'm lucky enough to. And so in playwriting, you, you wanna have your stage directions indented about three inches or so. Um, and so this is always, uh, always a problem because you can set your own tab stop just like in, in an old typewriter but you have to make sure you do it in the whole document uh, and, and do it correctly and all that. And so I, I generally tell students, like, don't ever play with these in general. Don't ever, because they'll say, oh, my margins, well, so I'll do that, but then that makes everything else look weird. Uh, so I hit control Z and get it back like that. Uh, so yes, thank, thank you, Mamta. Uh, where's my thing? Okay. Uh, so that's that. Those are just little things about cutting and pasting. Defaults. All right. So uh, you may or may not be aware that there are there, the. Ooh, I'll check the super chats here. Oh yes, thank you. Um, the defaults. You can change the default. So in the default for Word, they hate. It's in the it's in the spreadsheet. They hate uh, MLA. They hate it because uh, they have the the default font is that awful Calibri. Uh, and, and there's an eight point, uh, an eight point space between all the paragraphs and all this stuff. And it drives me crazy. And students say, I don't know how to fix it. And that's okay. That's, that's why we're here uh, and why the writing center is here. Um, but you can make these things the default. So if you want to change it and you can make any changes you want in the, the, the paragraph menu. And then if you click set as default, every document that you open on that, um, on that template will have what you want. See how I have zero here instead of eight. That's because I made my personal word like what I want it to be instead of, you know, the, the, the fancy looking um, uh, uh, default, right? Same thing in Google Docs. You can change the, so their, their default, is, uh, default is not what I want, right? So 12, 10 point, 12 point times New Roman uh, format. How did I do it? I did it earlier. You can do it in the paragraph styles uh, as well. And so I want all the text to say, boom, now it's times New Roman 12. Problem is that there's a 1.5 inch uh, distance between all the lines uh, and we don't want that. So again, I'm gonna make sure that everything under the text, um, the normal text uh, paragraph style is proper. And boom, save as, all right. So now every time I open a, a Word doc, it will, um, or a, a Google Doc, it'll have these these uh, uh, principles, principles, these very devout beliefs, right? Yes, they hate MLA formatting. Uh, Format Painter, uh, Format Painter is really, really important. It saves you a billion clicks. So if I take just random, um, So I've, in, I've imported the, the pros again. Now this pros, ooh, I don't like that, that arrow. I like those. Uh, so, it, so I've imported this text, but it's not the right format. I, I want it to be like this. I've already set it up where it's, it's my, my 12 point, I think it, it might be a little bit different. Yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, so I want it to look, I want it to be the, the, the right stuff. And I'll even I'll even change it to make it more, um, more obvious to you. Paragraph. I'll do that, and then I'll change the font color. You. All right. So you don't want this in your document, right? You, the format painter says, "All right. So take the format from this text. Take this format. You click the little paintbrush up here. Click." And then you click and drag over the text you want to fix and watch, boom. Now this text has the same principles, the same formatting as this text. 
Um, so again, that's something that students do or not do when they're when they're putting in their quotes, um, you know, that they've that they've cited from from the internet. And the same thing, uh, the same thing happens uh, in Word or in uh, Google Docs. Same thing in Google Docs, right? Um, so if we have proper text, that's uh, the correct font color and stuff. So all you have to do is click here. You click the, the roller. This one's a roller, the other one's a brush. Paint format and it should work. Boom. See how that changes things. Um, so, so again, these are, these are things that, uh, that it, it, it's annoying to think about, but they also way speed up your time. Uh, if I knew how to use InDesign better when I started, I, it wouldn't have taken me 11 hours to, to get frustrated and quit for the day. Um, so how do we improve? How do we improve things? I don't know. I, I desperately want your help. Um, the Writing Center and, and Steve Smith, are, they're, they're awesome. And, and they, can do, they can do a lot, uh, especially virtually. It's hard to get students to, to go to the Writing Center, even if they have to just you know, log into Zoom. Um, I've also thought about doing uh, right ways like presentations where, uh, and other people could too, obviously, where, where it'd be, wouldn't it be kind of cool in speaker in the speaker's corner classroom where you put one of the cameras on your hands and then one of the can like, and then the other projector is on, like shows you what's happening on the screen as it's happening to show you what each keystroke and what each mouse does. But I would love to hear more, more feedback or thoughts from you. Uh, any any more questions about about word processing programs or anything else? And please, by all means. And how do you get students to go to the writing center? Or uh, um, I've recommended that they contact Amanda Trahan, who's our um, writing fellow yeah. for the School of Business. And there's no, I mean, they turn in these horrible papers. <laughs> there's no evidence that they've made any effort to con to do either of those things. Um, I, I do the same thing that I do with the, the research parties. Do you know about the research parties? No, I've never been invited to one of those. <laughs> oh, you're invited. Everybody's invited. Um, so uh, in normal times, it actually sounds times, good right now. Start... I'm like, I'll go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in normal times, the research party, um, the, the librarians would have a couple tutors and, and a bunch of librarians there from like six to eight. Um, they'd get a couple pizzas, some candy, and students could come in, get help with their with their writing, but also have real librarians there to help them do whatever research. Um, and I found that really, really helpful. And what I would do is I would give extra credit, um, you know, for, for going to the research party. Um, so I, I do that and I, I'll give them extra credit if they go to the, the writing center. The writing center people are happy to either, you know, stamp the paper if we ever get to touch things again, or to, uh, or to you know, send you an email uh, with the students, you know, students uh, consent oh, and all okay. of that um, to let you know, hey, yeah, so I went to the, I went to the writing center. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I'd like more people to get to the writing center so they could offer more hours and all of that kind of thing. Um, so I, I, I guess incentive for me, I guess it's a little bit different if I'm teaching a, a subject, you know, like, like, like material. Um, but my goal is whatever a student can do to actually like, like think about their writing and improve it, like the grade, I care about the grade, but it's more important to me that they spend an hour with the writing tutor uh, or, or they, they go once a week or so, whatever it is. That's, I care about, I care more about that than like half a grade on a paper or something. Um, of course, other instructors may disagree and that's perfectly fine. Do people need to know how to get into the writing center? Like having person um, to sign up. I'm more than happy to take us to the writing center. So the writing center again, things are a little bit different. Uh, I'm I'm not part of the writing center, but for obvious reasons, uh, I love Steve and his his tutors, and I'm I'm more than happy to talk about it. Um, so they it's primarily it's primarily appointment based, which which is not ideal to me because um, uh, it's just harder to get students to do it. But if, if, you, make an, if you make an appointment, um, you can, the, the student can select, uh, I don't think I have credentials for it, but you just go in just like anything else. The students all know how to do it. Um, you make an appointment, you, you can go, they'll, they'll Zoom with you until things go back to normal. 
they can share screen just like we are. Uh, so it's really, really helpful and useful. And they have some really great tutors. There's also drop in at different times. Um, I guess last semester, it started out Sunday, but now I guess it's Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I like drop in uh, because, you know, I think that works with a student's schedule a little bit better. Um, the other great thing about the, the writing center is that they have, uh, they have all kinds, this, this one was my student. I, I wrote her a recommendation. Um, they, uh, Steve hires all kinds of different students. So, so uh, I hope we have a, all right. So, uh, so yeah, Kate, uh, you said your business. Um, so it's not like, it's not like Steve just hires, you know, creative writing majors who are awesome, but only know how to write poems, right? Um, so he's hired uh, Pamela Toussaint to, you know, who who's a, has an international business minor. So, so I don't, I don't know if Pamela's taken classes with you, but the point is that, you know, that this student knows, okay, knows kind of what, what the, the business people want. So it's, it's definitely geared toward the, um, whatever the, the needs of the majors are. Uh, the other thing that students can look at, which is uh, might be a little surprising, so e each of the students, each of the tutors, uh, Steve will Steve will note which classes they've taken. So, uh, I guess no business. But so, for example, uh, I don't I don't know who's who wants to volunteer what class they've taught. I saw. Um, I think I saw business law three fifty five in there, but. I didn't, I don't recall having her as a student. Yeah, All right, there. so no, so it, there it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. is, uh, this is the, um, oh, he keeps the classes well. on. Yeah. So uh, he had a student. And law too. Uh, but then oh. he, so at one point he had a, a tutor and then obviously tutors graduate. Um, by all means, if, if you have a, a, a great uh, business student who, who writes really well, um, go ahead and send a, an, an email to uh, Steve Smith to, you know, just say, hey, you might think about this person. Yeah, because uh, there's means. nobody and there, so, which is an ongoing problem, which is not the subject of this meeting, but there's uh -huh. never any help for business law. Uh, but the, the, the point is that, I know, yeah, I, I just love talking about writing, so I'm fine with, with everything. Uh, so again, whatever class there's, at some point, some tutor has taken it, and by all means, let let Steve know what what your needs are. And he's he's I'm sure you've met him. He's a really nice man. So, um, good. Uh, and any other thoughts or any other thoughts or, or needs or desires? I, I didn't want to take up the entire um, session. I just thought uh, we I'd start talking about this because I want to make it my uh, my initiative for the, for this semester and beyond. How, what are some other things that, that, that even teachers don't know about word processing or, or things that students, you come in and you're like, my goodness, how did you not know? One thing I learned from a student that had a visual impairment, he taught me using the control plus sign makes this, the uh, words bigger or the control negative would make it smaller. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you can also do that um, in the, the menu in Zoom. But yeah, no, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Oh, he muted and the background's on away. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I don't want to. I don't want to keep everybody. And if we're, uh, if we've already exhausted our, our questions, I'm, I'm more than happy to to let everybody go on about their day. Um, I hope that you've. <clears throat> Tiny, I have something that I need to do on a document that I routinely or relatively routinely that I never know how to do. It's where I have a, like a title page and um, then a couple of um, small new Roman numeral pages for like the table of contents and, you know, a table of sources or whatever. And then I start in with the numbered pages. Can you do it where that's all one document and um, that it kind of goes from one to the other where you start, you have, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I kind of know what you mean. Um, and either way, if, if you want to email me like an, like your example or, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy to, to help at a different time, but what I think you're kind of saying can be solved with, um, 
uh, sections and, and, and page number things. So like I said, do, do a okay. page break instead of, instead of a, uh, see how the page break looks with the invisible characters. If mm -hmm. I just hit enter, I'm, see how I'm adding characters to my document? I'm adding characters. Yeah. And then if I, if I take out these lines, boom, like the, the top of the next document changed. So instead of doing that, get rid of those, uh, you do it, insert, page break, mm -hmm. insert, or you can also, like I said, just hit, um, just hit uh, control enter and it inserts the page break. You can have, I think that probably will solve your problem, but you can also, there are also ways to do sections within- I think that's the solution to my problem, that one. Yeah, sec section breaks. So what you can do in one document, if I, if I wanna have my, uh, my, my goodness, my thesis was all about this. It was a novel told in documents. So each document was, a, had a different, complete different style. Um, so you can use section breaks so on the first page, and see how it'll just say section break. So you can say on this page, I want all of the, I want everything to be blue, right? And that's the, that's what I want, and that's fine. Uh, but then uh, in the next section, you can have different, uh, you can change the, the the section. You can have different um, indentation or, or or lines or whatever you want. So section breaks probably would help you for that. You can even, it, like you, even if you have the rest of your whole document and then you're going back to do the table of contents, you can pop in that section uh, in, in a pretty graceful manner. Yeah, I think that's the solution. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. helpful. I didn't know I could do that. Ken, You'll I'm also gonna... know, oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Ken, finish your thought. Well, I was going to point out, um, so what the, some of the tricks that the student, so they, they, they don't know how to put in a page number, but students, they know how to make the margins. Let's see. Oh, the, my paper is shorter if I make the margins. Uh, no, I want to make it bigger. Uh, if they, let's see. So I'll make the margins a little bit bigger, right? So I have to write fewer words. Uh, so I know how to do that. And then they know how to make the text. Instead of 12, we'll make it, make it. 13.5, right? So by by the end of it, you have a, a 10 page paper that's like 12 words long. Uh, I've also had students put in, I, this one surprised me. So all of their periods, all the periods they use when they don't do comma splices, they made all the periods like like giant. So this, they, they made, which makes their paper longer, but I also say, where are all these giant periods on your paper? They're very resourceful. They're very resourceful. Uh, but but go ahead, go ahead. Um, so I guess my question is about, you know, when you're numbering things, I always mess up my number. So let's say there is the num there are five questions. Within each questions, within each question, there is there are four options. Within each option, there are sub options. And that always messes anytime there are three levels of num numbering that kind of like messes it up. Is there an easier way to do it? Um, the only thing that I would tell you to do is to play with uh, with with up here. Uh, see now I have strange formatting. That's my fault. Uh, so the and it's blue. <laughs> All right, so. Playing, I, I always learned how to do things through playing, right? So you're playing with the with the number formats here. I want to work. Uh, so you hit tab, and, and then you get another sub level, and then you get more text, and then you go to the next sub sub item. Um, you can also play in the formatting if you want to change what you can make these whatever you want them to be. Control autocorrect options. And, uh, and and I believe you can you can you can change it to whatever characters you want in a hierarchy. It's just that that these are more standard and more you know normal and logical. D does that kind of address your question? Sorry. Um, so after um, this I thing that you put in, if you want to have another number which is two, right? Um, 
So how would you go for that? Not not this kind of two, like the regular number two. Because you had one, yeah. Uh, okay, so you basically use tabs uh, that, for that. No, 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 not tabs. Um, I'll show I'll show you. I can't I can't really, I can't zoom in on it. But see my cursor up here. Mm -hmm. Um. So so I'm gonna hit enter because I I want to keep this eye, right? And you can tell I use the home row. But so I'm, I'm going to click this instead. So I, it, it, when you're hitting backspace, that's different. But watch, boom, it's going to that previous hierarchy and then boom to the, the first level of the hierarchy. Got you. And then when you hit enter, it will again with the thing, you can again get to A, B, C again. Okay. A? Yeah. Right, same thing. Yeah, got, got you. Thank you. Sure, sure. The other thing is that uh, all of these questions, like uh, I, I'm not blaming us because we're all scholars, uh, but but often it'll drive me crazy because a, a student could, they, they're holding a device in their hands 24 hours a day that will, like if they, all they have to do is type in, how do I add a page number, right? And they'd have an answer in 10 seconds. Um, any other thoughts or, or, or concerns? Uh, you, you guys have all been really friendly. That's really nice. Um, all right. Well, it, it is three forty-six. So, so if everybody's happy, and, and I, I don't know if Rebecca's happy, then then I'll 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 be happy to to adjourn. But it's it's up to you.